right, here we are, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor with Sutton Group Ottawa. And today we are joined with one of our really favorite people in the city here, Guy Levique. And Guy is actually is a part of the Canada Business Association and also a vice president or associate vice president with the uh, University of Ottawa. Correct. And one of the things that you mentioned earlier as well, too, as far as the... Uh, the next five-year plan that you're putting together. What does that look like? Maybe just a high-level overview for yeah. the folks watching. Yeah, absolutely. So I refer to the Canada's largest technology park as a park where people come in, commute in, commute out every day. So the, the biggest fundamental change that's going to happen over the next decade is the park is going to transform itself into a living community. We have a, a famous tagline with the Canada North Business Association. It's where people work live, learn, play, and innovate. Mm -hmm. Live is not so much part of the park right now. It is you know, around the park, but not in the park. And so um, you might have read about the October 2022 significant announcement that Nokia made, yeah. uh, which brought uh, the Prime Minister and the Premier of Ontario uh, to make an announcement to say that Nokia was going to completely redevelop its campus in Canada North at the uh, corner of March and Terry Fox. <clears throat> in fact, they've got the construction fences up and they've cleared uh, some of the brush and, mm -hmm. and, and shrubs and trees uh, over the last month because they're going to be breaking ground on uh, a campus that's going to be a mixed use residential commercial R&D uh, space. That is going to, that was the first kind of signal that the technology park in Canada North wants to become a community. So people will be living. So we're talking uh, several thousand uh, to between 25 and, and 3,500 residential units that Nokia is, is, is considering. Maine and Maine is another developer that's going to be redeveloping just across the street, 13 acres to have somewhere in the neighborhood of another thousand residential units. Mm -hmm. So we're going to kind of change the the fabric and the the culture and, and, and the, the, the physical footprint of, of the Canada North Technology yeah. Park. And it's definitely something like from my background, at least speaking from my expertise, it's something that's missing that we have now in the city that, you know, that sense of being able to build more with less space. I think with this, you guys are kind of hitting that nail on the head is allowing for more and more uh, folks to be living within the park and not necessarily commuting in every day, which is a, a definitely hits multiple different aspects, in, in my opinion, which, you know, one, for example, energy saving a ton of energy. You're not commuting in and out quite often, so you're saving on that commute. Two is the, that ability to, you know, kind of harness that small space to build a, a much bigger sort of existence or presence from a residential standpoint, and then allowing for businesses to flourish as well too. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the stickier the community can be, the better. Uh, you know, there's, there's also a Brook Street uh, Hotel development, another tower that's been uh, that's been discussed. Brazil just recently announced that they're looking at uh, building uh, towers in the Canada North District. All of that has been underpinned by, uh, w w again, kudos to the city and to the province, uh, because uh, late last year, the province uh, approved the uh, city of Ottawa's official plan. Yeah. And one of the significant foundational pieces to that was to provide Canada North with something called the Special Economic Designation Zone. And that allows much uh, simpler, faster, more efficient uh, site permit and site planning approvals, permitting zoning approvals to uh, uh, allow developers to uh, much more quickly act mm -hmm. and develop uh, projects in the Ottawa region. Uh, Canada North and the airport are the only two areas that have received that special uh, designation. First time, first time in, the, in the province's history and in the city's history. So that, along with the Nokia and the other uh, projects that have been announced or that what I'd call development or ideation stages, are going to really cement parks transformation into a community. And the second Second part that, that that the Canada Business Association is going to be a catalyst for and a convener for is to make the park kind of a living lab, a living living innovation lab. So uh, we're looking at putting together a autonomous vehicle, autonomous shuttle kind of demonstration project within the park. Mm -hmm. So we can actually not only have a have a community that's living there and, and working there and, and, and playing and having fun, we're going to have a community that's going to see and live the innovation that happens in our companies on, on a daily basis. So it's kind of like you know, building the best of both worlds, a community and then a community that's driven by innovation through uh, these living lab kind of demonstration projects. Absolutely. And one of the things that we see quite often, like 
you mentioned earlier Palo Alto and like a few other areas of sort of concentration of high tech. Canada North has been known to be the sort of the North Valley, mm-hmm. yep. well, the Silicon Valley of the North kind of thing for the last little bit. How is that statement living proof today? Yeah, it, it's interesting, Fadi, because it's been a bit of a, a, a blessing and a curse to have the, the, the label of Silicon Valley North. Um, <laughs> In part because it, it conjures up images to for, to different people who who understand it and see it in, in, in kind of a either a very positive way or a very negative way, and so it's not a term that we've used a, a lot. Certainly, the references uh, you know we talked about the Northern Tiger and, and Silicon Valley North over the course of the last twenty years, but really we want we want Canada North to have its own identity. Uh, but we are just you know part of the city of Ottawa. We are part of the national capital region. And, you know, part of our, our long-term goal, and uh, there's a number of technology and business leaders that have that have gotten together over the last uh, almost year now to talk about how do we talk about the region as with one voice and not talk about the downtown core, not talk about Canada North, not talk about Get, how it gets you know, you know what makes the strength of our region is everything that that you can that's there to be offered. Whether it's the you know the, the seven or eight national museums that we have, the phenomenal Gatineau Park, and then uh, you know wonderful rural and and, and agricultural and uh, leisure uh, spaces that we have all around uh, the Ottawa region. So yes, Canada is a strength. It's one of the pillars uh, of the region. But how do we build that into a narrative that talks about the national capital region? So that's, you know, really uh, what we're trying to achieve. And so to that end, Canada North Business Association is working closely with, uh, as I said, technology leaders, but with Invest Ottawa, with Ottawa Tourism and with the city to kind of uh, see how, how we can shape that uh, narrative to say Ottawa, you know, is not just a public uh, federal public service uh, city. You know, we talk about, um, you know, Ottawa has the largest per capita proportion of technology workers, 13, yeah. 13.3% in the latest CBRE uh, report, which is greater than Silicon Valley South. <laughs> just to be a little facetious, you know, and about half of those are in the high tech private sector and the other half are working in the public sector uh, a lot for government. Mm-hmm. But still, we have such a highly educated workforce in the region. You know, between the four post-secondary institutions, there's over 100,000 students who are here, who study here. That's about 10% of the population of, of the Ottawa region or the national capital region. So, you know, we have you know, all the ingredients to make Ottawa, you know, a, a destination of choice for people who want to start their careers, start their families, build their roots, and be here. You know, affordability is on the is on the lips of every single uh, CEO that I talk to uh, in Canada North. And so how do we ensure that, um, you know, all the conditions are right for people to say, you know what, Canada North, Ottawa is a place where uh, I want to, uh, you know, start my career and build my family. Because once you do that, uh, people stay. Because uh, because the region is, is such a phenomenal place. You know that, I know that, our audience knows that. Uh, but we have to make sure that we are sensitive to the needs and the challenges that are happening right now, right? And so, uh, you know, affordability, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, if I, if I come and live in Canada North or in Ottawa, do I have access to a doctor? So those are the things that our, our, our business leaders, our CEOs, our HR leaders are, are, are confronted with when they're actually recruiting and retaining uh, yeah. talent here. And that's one of the biggest uh, hurdles I find in a lot of sort of re-relocating sort of scenarios, right? Like, where am I going to live? How it's going to be? Is there going to be a doctor? Is there going to be a pharmacist? Is that like all the services that I'm looking for that are basic needs for my family? Are they going to be around? And if we're looking at establishing and then continuing that sort of, you know, that the Silicon North of the Silicon Valley of the North is is we we have to be able to kind of be cognizant for that stuff for sure. Um, one of the things that you mentioned as well too, working with all different sort of BIAs out there, business associations out there in the city. How is that sort of looking for you guys? Yeah, so we we are part of what's called Ocobia, which is kind of the the agglomeration of the eighteen BIAs uh, in the city of Ottawa. What's interesting is that each BIA, as I, as I mentioned uh, when we started. Uh, our chat now is that they all have kind of their own unique context and realities. And so, uh, you know, there's no other BIA that has, uh, you know, uh, such a strong uh, density of, of technology companies. So that makes us kind of unique to, for example, Barhaven or CARP or the Heart of Orleans mm-hmm. or uh, or the Glebe or uh, or the Byward Market, of course. Yeah. So uh, part of part of what we we do in, in connecting and networking with Ocobia, which is that, that group, 
is uh, understanding that you know together as a as a collage of those 18 BIAs we have a role to play to make Ottawa a destination of choice uh, because we, you know, if we build on each of our strengths and understand and recognize what our strengths are, but also be sensitive and aware of what the challenges are, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, the, the challenges of, of the downtown core or of, of, of the suburbs, uh, you know, that allows us to be able to talk about Ottawa in kind of a, what I'd call a, you know, a smarter, uh, more comprehensive way uh, to the people that, that we meet. And, you know, I, every, every second or third week uh, at Hub 350 and with the Canada North Business Association, we host a people who are visiting uh, Canada Northern region uh, for the first time. And because I wear two hats, what happens often is people who come and visit uh, the University of Ottawa say, you should probably go and spend an hour or two in Canada North and maybe go visit the University of Ottawa's campus or go visit Hub 350 and vice versa. So that's kind of an example of how we're connecting dots to make sure that uh, people have a, a full experience of what Ottawa has to offer, especially when there are delegations that come from the UK or from France or from the Bahamas or, uh, or from Germany or even, you know, inviting ministers uh, from Queen's Park uh, from Ontario who uh, don't don't have the opportunity to come to Ottawa uh, very mm-hmm. often so uh, you know those are all the opportunities that uh, as as a, as a BIA and as a part of the group of the 18 BIAs our job is to put the best face forward for Ottawa to uh, the people who uh, we, we meet on a daily basis what are some of the ways that some folks out there can find out about those events and, and some of the ways that they can get involved with. Yeah. So we have uh, multiple uh, social media uh, platforms and channels. You know, we have our, our, of course, a dedicated website. We have our newsletter, which came out just yesterday, uh, we, which we call the Canada Networker. We have a, a privileged partnership and I have to have a shout out to the Ottawa Business Journal and Michael Curran, who are the complete champions for technology and for business leadership uh, uh, in the city. So uh, we uh, have our very privileged partners with the OBJ to talk about the success of technology in, in, in the Ottawa region and, and, and profiling Canada North uh, businesses. So, you know, there are so many, uh, so many ways that we do that. I mean, we've got our LinkedIn, we've got our Twitter, we've got Instagram, we've got all sorts of, of platforms. Part of our job is to be out there in person. You know, mm-hmm. social media is, is great, but it's it's just it has its limitations and so part of our job is to bring as many people into hub 350 meet people one of the things that i always ask when i'm uh, either an mc or or providing greetings to uh, to a a group coming into hub 350 invariably i ask uh, and i ask for a show of hands to say how many uh, of you for is it the first time in hub 350 and the good trend is that the number of hands going up is going down Mm -hmm. Um, but what I'd like to see is, is making sure that every event that we have, there's at least a significant number of hands that come up because we want to, we want to make sure that we have new people coming in every day because they become ambassadors, uh, for the park, for the KNBA, for the region. And so that, that for us is, is really the way to to do that. And we do that by having really meaningful events. So, uh, you might be aware that just in a few days, we'll be, uh, we're going to be hosting, uh, something called the TEDx Canada talks. Yeah. So we have six speakers who are going to be talking. Um, we've got a full house, a limited space, uh, but those type of events are the ones that help generate the buzz around technology and around, around Canada North. And so we continue to deliver uh, what I call high value, uh, high interest uh, events. My uh, good friends and colleagues at Wesley Clover also do the monthly uh, Tech Tuesday events, which because they've become so, so uh, popular are now being held at the Brook Street Hotel on a regular basis, just so we can, uh, just so that we, so that Wesley Clover I can, can love these. And I still, I haven't actually been to one in about maybe four years, but they used to be my favorite. Yeah. Well, the next one next uh, Tuesday is on uh, procurement and strategic procurement and how the governments can help place like the Canada North Technology Park and the companies uh, to help uh, them become by becoming their clients. And so procurement is uh, one of the key advocacy planks of the Canada North Business Association is, is having. And we thank Wesley Clover International for putting on a Tech Tuesday that's going to dig deeply into that. Really, the ask is for governments at all levels, city uh, or municipal, uh, provincial and federal, to be become clients of our technology mm-hmm. leaders and technology businesses because that's the best way to ensure that uh, they will have success by having as first or early clients uh, you know the, the federal or provincial governments 
Absolutely. And it's really one of the ways to allow for stickiness as well within the park is, you know, what these businesses doing what they're supposed to be doing is, is improving and increasing their economical value. Right. Uh, having the government as one of their clients is definitely up there. Yeah, for sure. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at, at the end of the day, everywhere I go, some I use the, the three C's. I said, we're about connecting, we're about collaborating, or, and we're about building community. And, you know, that I kind of is kind of like the driving principles behind the strategic plan and the objectives of the uh, Canada North Business Association, the the mighty team that we have. We have six fantastic uh, employees uh, and leaders who are who are driving the Canada North the Business Association work. And of course, I'm supported uh, uh, in my work as chair with a uh, phenomenal board as well. So we've got, you know, the best we've got the best people around uh, and we've got the best park as I said, there's no other place like it uh, in Canada. And so we just have to find a way to let everybody know. Yeah, and whatever we can do to help out. I mean, part of it is having you here on the on the podcast. I believe next week or the week after, I'm having Ben as well, too, from Wesley Clover. Correct. Which I believe is, is a great asset for the city as well, too, to bring. Specifically speaking around for them, correct me if I'm wrong, is is the, the funding and allowing for a lot of sort of entrepreneurs coming into the city uh, looking at startups and things like that. Wesley Clover sits on the board of directors for so many different uh, places in Canada, so many different organizations in Canada that are bringing about fantastic change and fantastic technologies to the mix. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, Wesley Clover is part of the heart uh, of the Canada North Park. And I'll let my colleague and friend, Ben Morris, who's actually the vice chair of the Canada North Business Association. So we spend a lot of time together. Yeah. I probably spend more time with Ben than I do with my own adult sons. Uh, but I'll let Ben speak eloquently to what Wesley Clover does and, and brings to, to the region and to the park. But uh, he will regale you with fantastic stories of world leading things that are happening right in the park. Uh, you know, and you know, a company like Ross Video that uh, does you know little video productions of things like the Super Bowl or Taylor Swift concerts. Oh, uh, amazing! You know, yeah, he, he he's got a number of stories to tell. Really cool. Um, really appreciate you being on and putting the time with us here. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you. And again, you're kind of driving that same crusade that we have for our show, which is making sure that when people think of Ottawa, they don't think it's a boring city. I've been hearing that term and it's kind of grinding my gears. And it's one of the reasons why I started the podcast in the first place is to make sure that we bringing awareness to the city, showing that it's, it's a fantastic city to live in. It's a fantastic city to move in. Uh, and continue to flourish, and specifically speaking around the technology park, because I mean, my whole show is about Canada on the rocks. Right. Uh, so, really appreciate it uh, again here, Guy, and uh, looking forward to the episode coming out and, and seeing that. What I wanted to do is for, for the audience to let them know that, hey, look, if you love this kind of content, please don't for, forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get more and more of these episodes. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll be alerted every time a new episode comes out and you'll know so many things about this fantastic city and so many things about the fantastic businesses that are happening here within right under your nose here in the city of Ottawa. Guy, thanks again. Really appreciate it. And looking forward to uh, meeting Ben and the rest of the team. Great. Thanks, Fatty. It was a pleasure. Appreciate Perfect. you and the invitation. Thanks. Thank you. 